Hi, and welcome to the Mayor's Report. I'm Northampton Mayor David Narkowitz, and this is my monthly program on Northampton Community Television, where we talk about the issues and projects that, are wor that we're working on here in the city of Northampton. For this month's episode, I thought we would take on uh, a really big subject that there's been a lot of buzz about uh, in the community and in the region, and that's the return of passenger rail to the city of Northampton uh, as part of the larger Knowledge Corridor project, uh, which involves uh, the state of Connecticut as well as Massachusetts. And so joining me today uh, is Tim Doherty, uh, who is from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, their Rail and Transit Division, and he's one of the point people on this project that's been meeting with Northampton officials over the last many months uh, to work with us on this project as it moves forward. So Tim, welcome to the Mayor's Report. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you. Thank you for um, having me, and uh, it's good to talk about the project. Definitely. So I think it might be helpful to give uh, viewers just kind of a scope of the, the history of the project. Now, we haven't had rail in, uh, in Northampton for about 30 years. The tracks fell into disrepair. Uh, they eventually moved the line uh, over uh, to, to Palmer, and, and so now the train runs on the other side of the Connecticut River. Um, so part of it for us is moving it back, but it's part of a larger project that was a big federally funded project. So can you just give us kind of an overview of the, of, uh, of the Knowledge Corridor project? Sure, sure. Um, this project is something we've been working on for a long time, but took a great had a great opportunity um, with uh, basically the Stimulus Act, um, put a lot of money at the federal level available for, um, well, high-speed rail and what they're calling high-performance rail, where you take a, a, a rail project that might already be working and then try to make it work better. And so, so there was this real opportunity to put the um, existing service that's, that serves Western Mass and put it back where it historically had been from the beginning, uh, and at the same time bring the train back to Northampton, um, add a station stop in Greenfield, uh, potentially, you know, and, and, and now it's turned out to be a station stop in Holyoke. Put all that together and, and really bring um, sort of a good opportunity to Western Mass. So the particular Knowledge Quarter project that, that, that I'm working on um, for Massachusetts is basically taking a 49-mile railroad um, that was still there. Trains are running on it every day, but um, the trains now are only freight trains. There are not all that many of them, and they go fairly slow speeds, and bringing that up to, in places, a 79-mile-an-hour 79, 79 railroad mm -hmm. um, that will you know, effectively take you know, about a half an hour off the travel time of uh, the, the Vermonter uh, that's moving from St. Albans, Vermont, to Washington, D.C., take about a half an hour off that travel time, uh, as well as, as basically, as you said, bringing the train back to Northampton. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the funding is largely federal funding that's coming through, through the right, state. Right, right. I mean, this was a really once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Massachusetts and really for the country, um, uh, you know, really under... Um, of the president's vision uh, in the Stimulus Act of, mm -hmm. of uh, 2009, uh, American Recovery Act, um, provided uh, basically $8 billion for uh, what's now called high performance rail. Um, it was a competitive process. We were one of many applicants. Um, we submitted an application um, in the summer of 2009, and then in the spring of 2010, we uh, 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 we're successful. We found out that we're successful, and we've been working on the working on implementing that project ever since. Well, I know I'm really excited about it. It's been one of the things that I've talked about since becoming mayor because I see it as having uh, potential on so many different levels. There's the tr obviously there's the transportation uh, potential, and you mentioned uh, you know the fact that it would um, cut time off that line, which we hope means will attract more riders to it. Um, obviously, it'll hopefully get people out of cars and, and reduce congestion along the north-south corridor. Uh, but it also has tremendous, I think, economic development potential. Uh, you know, Northampton, uh, we are part of that knowledge corridor, and this is a way to move people up and down the valley, up and down uh, 
the Connecticut River Valley, uh, and I think it's, it's got lots of great potential. So one of the things I did, which you're aware of, is put together a passenger rail advisory committee here, um, which you and, and some of your colleagues have been kind enough to meet with to really keep us up to speed and get our input on the aspects of the project that affect Northampton. So talk about where we are uh, in the construction just generally of the project, like what does it entail? Because it's, it's not just, okay, we're gonna, you know, uh, switch a few things around and, and suddenly the trains are going to be coming back. This is a fairly significant infrastructure project where you're actually replacing uh, the rail beds themselves. Right, right. I'll talk a little bit about um, we're, again, it's 49 miles, so one of the first things that we're doing is replacing the steel rails. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, purchased um, 49, a little bit more than that, maybe 50 miles of rail that uh, has already been delivered to the site. It's already sitting there, ready to go. Um, that's gonna be installed. Uh, some of that was installed last year. More of it's gonna be installed this year. Uh, the other thing that we did is we replaced um, up to mm, yesterday or today, or last week and today, um, about 80,000 ties. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the, the ties that the rails sit on. Um, those have already been in the ground and the work, work started last year, but the, there was a lot of work this summer, uh, and so everybody along the line has at least seen the tie job go through once. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be followed up by a rail job. Uh, the other thing that's going to start happening is all the grade crossings are going to get replaced, which is um, the you know the, both the safety warning devices in terms of as you come up to the grade crossing, you see the lights come on and you stop. So we have one of those at Damon Road that right. people are Absolutely. familiar with crossing now. Absolutely. Um, so that's going to need some some upgrades. And Damon Road is, is definitely one of the more complicated grade crossings, and we've spent a lot of time to design that in a way um, that's, um, a, you know, that really works because safety is really the primary, mm -hmm. primary issue. Um, Damon Road is a very complicated, there's a lot of traffic there. Uh, one of the things that happens right now, which is really not a good thing, and really anybody that's watching this should be thinking about, um, is not stopping on the great uh, stopping mm -hmm. on the road tracks mm -hmm. um, as the um, as the train comes, the lights go on, or something like that, or even if you're just sitting there waiting, the let you see you know waiting on the red light, and you come up to the great crossing. You know, the last thing you want to do is be in a situation where your car's on the car's on the tracks when when a train's coming. It's um, so this will involve gates and lights? This will involve uh, gates and lights mm -hmm. and uh, basically using the traffic lights to clean out the, what's called queues and, and, and make sure, you know, really facilitate to make sure that nobody, nobody's doing that. Um, and uh, also putting a new uh, traffic signal um, at uh, the end of Industrial Drive. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as coordinating all Which is going to be great because that's a, that's a very yeah, congested yeah. area. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a very congested area. I think these improvements are going are to definitely affect the safety, might make it a little bit easier for people to get through there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, more work's needed to be done there. You know, this is only sort of the interim, mm -hmm. the interim of a, a larger project that, that Maston and uh, the city have been working on for some time. But at least uh, we'll address, um, you know, the, the safety concerns there and, and really uh, make it a solid uh, investment. Um, You're also doing a tunnel as well, not far right, from there, uh, right. for the rail trail. Right, well, we're actually calling it an underpass. An underpass, excuse me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, tun tunnels, if they're a certain length, it, it creates. We don't want to call it the little dig or something uh, yeah, out right, here in Western right. Pass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and actually, I mean, the, this, is, this is kind of one of those pieces of a project that it, to me is kind of interesting. This is a, a tunnel underneath the railroad tracks or an underpass underneath the railroad tracks that people have been talking about for a long time yeah. and really couldn't figure out how to do it. A um, bunch of different challenges there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of like the last missing link of about a 50 mile network of bike paths that all converge in Northampton. Yeah. And people need to be able to go underneath. And right now you can go sort of a convoluted way. or People go over the tracks now. Which That's, they uh, really exactly. should not do. Exactly, um, yeah. And, uh, but we basically have the rail. Uh, this is for folks who are listening. This is behind Taco Bell and, and right, McDonald's. Right. Uh, and then right across the railroad tracks is the connection to the, the path that takes you over to Hadley and Amherst. So Right, um, yeah. right. Um, so certainly one of the things that the, the, sort of a neat part of the project is, is we're going to be able to tie that together mm -hmm. um, We've got a good design that allow people that are just going to be able to continue on, they'll have to slow down a little bit, they'll be able to go underneath the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's actually, 
you know, uh, it's going to be a shorter distance um, than, than they go now. And would, it be, would it be comparable? I know over at UMass we have a few, uh, there's a few of those that go under, like uh, University Drive, some sections. Well, it's I, not, I'd it's hope not a tunnel, I, but it's just sort of a, you go I under. Would ho well, I, I would hope it'd be better than that yeah. because, of, because we really, you know, people really need to use this. They really, mm -hmm. there's no reason that anybody should be going across the railroad tracks. Exactly, um, exactly. As soon as this is complete. Um, I mean that that is um, I mean you're trespassing it's, exactly it's a safety yeah. issue and everything like that so yeah I mean I think that this we want this to be successful we want everybody to use it and designing it that way mm -hmm. um, you know lighting it um, and and things like that there's a couple of these around the state that we are really happy with mm -hmm. you know we might you know sort of look to do a few more um, kind of expensive but mm -hmm. but when, when you have a lot of people going going through it makes a lot of sense. One of the other uh, infrastructure projects that, that will obviously be important to Northampton is a station. Right. Uh, and I often, people come up to me and say, wow, why don't you just use Union Station? That would be perfect. And obviously, in the heyday, Union Station was a true Union right. Station train right. station. It had right. two different lines converging. But, but then more, more recently, there had been a platform uh, off to the side, uh, a more traditional platform. And so what, we're propo what you're proposing in Northampton, and I know what you've been working on designs uh, with the Passenger Rail Advisory Committee, is a, is a platform. A looks like a commuter rail platform of sorts, uh, but a place that people will be able to, to, to catch the Amtrak uh, train in Northampton. Right. One of the, I mean, clearly, clearly we, we, um, when you build a train, you, you want to be able to have people ride it. Um, one of the key, key elements of, of the project was uh, putting the station platform back in use in Northampton. There mm -hmm. was an exist, the existing Amtrak platform from when the service uh, continued up until 1986 is still there. Um, the pad, at least. The, yeah. Well, the pad and the, and, the, and the asphalt and everything like that. Yep. Um, so we're basically going to take that area um, mm -hmm. that's existing there and, and uh, rehabilitate it. Uh, we're also going to build a what's called sort of a mini high platform um, that would allow people, uh, you know, potentially people with some accessibility issues or just regular passengers who want to who want to be able to get in that way. Um, we're going to construct that on the north side of the north side of the location, and then there's going to be a canopy that goes over both the, that mini high platform and as well as some of the some of the regular platform, um, and uh, you know have the amenities that you need in a in in a train station. Um, the uh, design, we spent some time sharing it with the city and, and the advisory group and think that we've come up with something that's really good. And no, it looks great and I know you've yeah, tried to, um, I know your designer tried to mimic the architecture of right, Union right. Station and, and, and also, I mean, in a modern train station, people buy their tickets online, they buy them right. on their phone, they buy them on the train, so really people need a place to be able to to be undercover with their luggage, uh, have parking, those kinds of things. Right. I, I mean, you know, clearly one of the things that's happened, you know, since when that was a train station is is that, that um, the industry's changed a little bit. I mean, every, everything's changed. I mean, mm -hmm. back then people didn't have phones, they, mm -hmm. you know, potentially um, didn't have a lot of things. And you went to the station, um, you know, to buy your tickets, but also to get a lot of information. It was sort of a center of the community. Well, that sort of changed. Um, None of the um, stations north of Springfield for the Vermonter have uh, agents, mm -hmm. so um, so they're all basically you, you know you come and, and it's um, ready there and and then the, the, the probably the best thing that, that Amtrak's done and is going to make it a lot easier for people to uh, to ride the train is their um, e-ticketing, which um, you can go online on their website and just type in to pay your ticket online or something mm -hmm. like that. Print out print out something or even. Bring uh, bring your smartphone with a PDF with a little barcode on it. And mm -hmm. You show it to the conductor, and he scans it, and you're all set. Yep. Um, you know, it was uh, that basically came into to use about a year ago, mm -hmm. and it's surprising how much easier it is to ride the train, and 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 really how how revolutionary has it been for the larger Amtrak network. But it's it's available there now, and then also, I mean, the other thing is it, it makes it. Um, you know, it's affordable for the passenger because, you know, it's a little bit easier to do, but then it also makes it a lot easier for, for the folks that are supporting the trains to Exactly. Uh, to, to I mean, that. we are excited about 
the Union Station is in transition right now, and we uh, we have a, a developer who's uh, who's working to redevelop it. There's already an active bar there, and they're looking at doing some restaurants and some retail. But I, it'll still be a great convergence of the train and right, having right. having and that there, and also just access to downtown Northampton. I know right. that's one of the things we're really this committee that I'm working with is really looking at is how do we how do we connect the train to our other existing the PBTA to taxis to you know all the other things so that we really do make it integrated into our modes of transportation here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the redevelopment of that building or the reuse of that building with a or I didn't even say reuse. I mean, it's a new person coming into that doing something really good there. Mm -hmm. That's a positive thing for the for Northampton. It work. It's compatible with what we're planning. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need the building for rail service. Um, it's just it, you know it happens to be a, a great thing, and I think that you know it's it's an amazing uh, sort of uh, asset for the for the community. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's good to be part of uh, you know having our part of that. So. Uh, the million dollar question, or however many million dollar question it is, is people ask me, when's it going to happen? What's the timing? So give us an update on sort of the construction timeline and when projected you see us getting to the point where the, the, the infrastructure will be ready to actually support trains and we may see you know, some of those first trains uh, coming through. Right. I mean, I think we're, um, we're working really hard. Um, there's folks... Um, Working, you know, every day on the project, um, uh, you know, with the railroad, um, and uh, we may be running a little bit longer than we had hoped. Uh, it took us a, a, you know, with a with a new program, starting it up with um, getting things going. It took us longer than we thought, mm -hmm. um, but that we uh, right now are projecting to uh, have the railroad in a position where it could. Uh, um, you know, basically start running passenger trains in, you know, December of 2014, so about a 15 months from now. Okay. Um, and then we'll continue to do work for the, for the probably a year afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. finishing the punch list items, uh, um, but that we wanted to get, uh, wanted to get as much done as we can, get it, get it up and, and able to run. Um, you know, the track work is moving along really quickly. Um, I think, you know, as I said on the construction side, on the, the ties, the station work and, and things like that, we knew it was always going to be, you know, sort of in the second second part of the construction season. Um, so that'll be in two, 2014, next, yeah, next construction a lot of season. The, yeah, a lot of that work will take place next year. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I think some folks in Northampton probably already noticed that the um, the first, first, first part of construction has already sort of happened, yep. and hopefully um, that didn't inconvenience anybody too much, and mm -hmm. there'll be another round or two of that mm -hmm. uh, and then the station work uh, the underpass Damon Road um, um, and you know probably a few other things that'll have, and know, then happen. initially just so people understand initially what's going to happen is basically the Vermonter line that that currently uh, goes through Amherst twice a day north right, one direction right. south the other uh, the other part of the day that's going to basically move over to Northampton. Right. Um, I've obviously been already working with some of my mayors up and down the, the valley here to, to begin lobbying that could we see additional service added at some point because there's also an effort to the south of us at Union Station in Springfield to really revamp that station, rebuild it, make it a, 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 a multimodal center. And, uh, and there's going to be these trains coming into Springfield every hour uh, from the south. And, uh, and is that an opportunity that we could maybe move some additional Amtrak trains uh, up to Holyoke, Northampton, Greenfield? Right. I mean, I, I you know, um, sort of there are two things in, two things in your, your, your comment there. One is, I think the first thing is, maybe I should probably explain to people a little bit what, what the advantage of coming over to Northampton is, mm -hmm. um, in, you know, in addition to Northampton being a really vibrant community and, and really uh, working out there being a great place. Amherst is also a great place uh, and where the train is now. But the because one of the operational constraints when the when the line was shifted over there, um, you know, almost 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, was that the train goes to Amherst, uh, then goes down to Palmer, uh, and then has to reverse directions and then come back to Springfield. And so that maneuver takes 
you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. It, it, it takes a much longer than if you just had a straight shot from, mm -hmm. say, Amherst into Springfield or, or more, more appropriately from, from Northampton into Springfield where it's about 16, 17 miles. Um, it's a much straighter, straighter move, whereas that involves reversing and, and things like that, and you're sort of going uh, two, sides of a, two sides of a triangle. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas Northampton would be just one side. Um, Plus, you don't get the speed at, with all with right all those with, with with all those and maneuvers angles. and everything yeah. like that. And and uh, so I I think uh, you know it's it's probably important um, uh, to just sort of mention what what those constraints are. And and you know people, if you, you can take a look at a map, you can sort of see what the see what those challenges mm -hmm. are. Um, you know, as for um, our project here, I think clearly um, you make an investment. That you know, both you know, at the state level and then at the federal level, to do a project like this, you don't do it just for one train. Mm -hmm. There's there there is a, a long-term interest in providing additional service. Um, there might be an opportunity to use some of the some of the equipment and stuff like that that's in Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been something your agency's been doing in other parts of the state. I know you just uh, I think you just brought online a rail spur out to the Cape. Right, uh, right, and, and you're working on other other uh, uh, rail spurs to really emphasize rail, uh, reviving right. rail in the state. Right, and I think you know I think one of our focuses is, is trying to trying to do things that are um, very efficient. Try mm -hmm. to do them, um, you know, look look very carefully at what the opportunities are there. You know, scale the opportunity with to what the demand is. Uh, and make really wise investments. So the Cape Service is, is a great example of that. There's a really good opportunity. It's really successful and done very quickly. Um, and certainly this project is, is along those thing, lines. And I think that one of the things I know um, my colleagues at MassDOT, uh, you know, Secretary Davies probably going to be really interested in sort of having the conversation with the, the community mm -hmm. up here in terms of what, what uh, other opportunities there are uh, you know, to, to provide service beyond the Vermonter, um, and uh, the, the um, but I think you know, my, sort of my focus is just to get the get, get the, it up and running, get yeah. the project running. Yeah, but I think that I think you know, you get it built, you get get a train running on right. those tracks, and then right. I think you'll start to see a lot of probably public momentum for increasing uh, right. that. You know, if you right. build it, people will will ride it. So. Uh, we were talking at the beginning about the high-speed nature of it, and that's another thing I often hear. You know, we, I think you reference you know up to 70 miles an hour. Clearly, it's not going to be going that fast when it comes through Northampton. I know that's one of the other issues we're working well, on. Well, you know, I mean, I think that that's an important important thing. The reason it's not going to be going that fast in Northampton is because you're stopping in the station in Northampton. Exactly. But on either side of that, it's going to, going to be going fast, and I don't think really um, trains. You know, if, if you're on the tracks, no matter how fast the train's going, you don't, you shouldn't be on the tracks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's dangerous if yeah. it's going five miles an hour, yep. or if it's going faster. Um, and I think that's really, you know, the, the conversation that, that we'll be having. Um, you know, you know, we always having about educating people that you know they really shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know that it's really important to sort of respect the, um, you know, respect the fact that you know. That, that isn't where you should be, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, in terms of the speed, I think we, you know, we certainly again, it's a it's a great opportunity to. Um, there are some places where um, long straight stretches where you know you're able to go a little bit faster than you could mm -hmm. through a whole bunch of curves. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, uh, you know, again, I appreciate you taking this time today, and obviously, I appreciate the time that you've been coming out to Northampton to to meet with. My Passenger Rail Advisory Committee, I know you're also uh, taking part in some sort of larger valley-wide meetings that Congressman McGovern has been organizing, again, just to try to keep all the various stakeholders apprised of the progress of the project. And, you know, we're, th clearly there's a lot of excitement. I know you went to one of those first hearings of my committee and there was, you know, a packed house of people, I think, who yeah. just wanted to learn more about it and understand it. So there's definitely a buzz out there about it. So we're we're looking forward to it, and obviously we'll be continuing to check in with you about the project. And but thank you so much for for coming on today. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah.
And I want to thank uh, you again for tuning in to this episode of the Mayor's Report. As always, if you have comments or suggestions or ideas for future programs, call my office, uh, 587-1249, or shoot me an email at mayor at northhamptonma.gov. Uh, we love to get the feedback and, and love to get ideas for future programs. So until next time, thank you again for tuning in to the Mayor's Report.